today I want to talk about uh, Diversathon and the book that I read for it. Um, Diversathon is a period of time between the 22nd and the 29th of January um, and I think it was originally made up by um, three YouTubers, uh, Christina Marie, um, She Might Be Monica and Swibbles Reads. This year Simon from Savage Reads um, also joined them and that's how I heard about it and um, I didn't hear about it till quite late on actually. Um, and I kind of happened to have this book around that I, I was going to read so I thought I'd read it a bit earlier than I would have done um, and kind of include it in that, that period of time. That book is God Help the Child by Toni Morrison. Um, I mentioned that I bought this book quite recently um, and it arrived and I basically started reading it um, straight away. This book mainly follows Bride um, who is a black woman um, who has a job with a cosmetics company. But the book begins and ends with a chapter from her mother um, called Sweetness. And um, Sweetness felt a lot of shame towards Bride when she was born because Bride was born as a very dark child. So Bride constantly felt like her mother was ashamed of her um, and that led to her doing a thing in her childhood which um, was to get the attention of her mother and to get her mother to love her and basically this book revolves around what that was. It's told by several different perspectives. Two of those perspectives I was quite perplexed by why they had been included. One is Bride's assistant Brooklyn who is a white girl with dreadlocks. All of Brooklyn's chapters seemed to just point out that there was this sneaky side to her that the reader could see but that Bride couldn't. So that seemed a bit strange to me and I'm not sure it really pushed the plot forward. This book, it, a bit like um, when I read The Girls, has a lot of child abuse in it. It has um, a lot of really unpleasant, uncomfortable scenes to read about. So again, in this book there are a lot of really interesting relationships between Sweetness and Bride, uh, between Booker and um, his aunt and then um, between Brooklyn and uh, Bride. That is an interesting relationship, although as I mentioned before, it's a bit strange to have a chapter from Bro Brooklyn's point of view. I think there's a lot of emphasis put on um, the love that almost appears lost between uh, Sweetness and Bride and how that really affected Bride and uh, affected her actions and behaviour as a child. In particular, Sweetness's reaction to that uh, in the first and last paragraph. So in the last chapter, it's written um, from Sweetness's point of view. I know I did the best for her under the circumstances. When my husband ran out on us, Lula Ann was a burden, a heavy one, but I bore it well. Yes, I was tough on her, you bet I was. After she got all that attention following the trial of those teachers, she became hard to handle. I couldn't let her go bad. I slammed the lid and warned her of the name she'd be called. Still, some of my schooling must have rubbed off. See how she turned out. A rich career girl. Can you beat it? So Sweetness's attitude towards Bride and the way that she turned out and how she attributes that to the way that she took care of her doesn't really match up with what we know as reality by the end of the book. There's also the relationship between Booker and Bride um, and most of the book is trying to find answers to uh, why Bride has discovered this loss at the beginning of the book. Um, and it's about her seeking answers. And there's a strange bit of magical realism in this book, I think, as well, um, where Bride feels like she is retracting back into a young girl again. And so um, we get these really kind of surreal descriptions of what's happening to her body. I think that's a really interesting way of tracking Bride's mentality through the book. This book also deals with a lot of uh, race issues and gender issues, um, but a lot of the uh, focus is actually on uh, child abuse and the kind of difficult childhoods that these characters have. The focus was on the actual histories of these characters and the way that they brought these histories into their adult lives. So the narrative style kind of um, I wouldn't say it put me off, but it definitely stopped me from getting as immersed as I could do in this book. So it's quite a patchy narrative up until the end, and I can see why Toni Morrison might have done this and written it as she has, um, but I found it quite hard to follow. At the end, everything seemed to come together and the narrative style seemed to become a lot 
more flowing and a lot easier to follow. Um, which was a shame because I found that I really kind of got into the last bit of the book and then ended. Having said that, I did enjoy the book overall. Um, I don't think it's a perfect book, but I think it was also a, a valuable book to read and I think it did um, give me a lot of ideas about other people's experiences and the way that other people experience life. And I think whenever that happens in a book it's worth the read. So if you've ever read this book or if you've heard of this book and would like to read it um, I'd love to have a chat, uh, leave a comment if you'd like, um, you can like this video just to let me know you've watched it. I'd, I'd love to have a discussion about this book and see if um, anyone else has any other ideas about the things that I've mentioned um, or if you think I've missed something let me know uh, and until the next video, bye!